And I'm here with Nicholas Vinnan here from Silicon Chip. Hey, Hello. Nicholas, how you doing? Uh, fine, thanks. How's the stand going? Uh, not bad. We've had quite a bit of feedback the last day, most of it positive, which is good. Excellent. And even even the people who had criticisms were pretty nice about it. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. But you can't please everyone with every no, project, right? That's right. Yeah, because you're the main project designer for oh, Silicon. I don't know if I said main, but I, I certainly, myself and John Clark are the two people who do most of the projects. Yep, yeah. How yeah. long does it take you to develop these projects, which we're going to take well, a look at? Um, in terms of, uh, well, there's the throughput and the latency. Right, the, the yeah, th yeah. Throughput, throughput is about once a, one a month. Yep. Sometimes a little bit more. Latency is more like, well, some of them take six months, some take three months. Right. I usually yes. have to start them a, a well in advance. Because so, yep. I usually have one being designed, one that's being made, one where I've built it, and one where I'm testing it and writing software and so on. Because some of yeah. you projects are quite complex software wise yes so they, they can take be some time some of them can sometimes yeah. it might take me a whole month pretty much just to write the software yep. um, a lot of the time I can reuse bits of code I mean I find it, it works pretty well actually I use, usually program in C actually yep. let me just turn this down so yeah that let's it's not, turn it down so that's there not we go with my what I'm saying but, um, uh, I mean, well, for example, with this project, I've used the uh, SD card code that we've had before. I've I used a lot of the that. same audio code. Yep. Um, so it's sort of a, a matter of taking the different modules, putting them together, getting it, getting it to work, um, and then a little bit of custom code for the, for the project. But, um, Lots of late hours working on the no, project? Not really. No, um, yeah, I'm pretty well. You're pretty efficient I do, at it? Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, sometimes... You learn, like, to, be, some, you, some, you learn to be efficient. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's more a matter of scheduling and, and just planning ahead than anything yep. else. Right. Um, and also the main thing is trying not to introduce too many bugs and then, then not have to spend much time fixing them. That's it. And um, ideas? No shortage of ideas? Not really, no. no. Um, pretty much I don't have to try to come up with them. By the time I need a new project idea, usually there's one waiting. <laughs> right. Um, at, right. at some point, I'm sure I'll run out, but it hasn't happened yet. Okay, plenty of yeah. suggestions coming from viewers. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, right. Readers, we've had a, sorry, we've had a few over the so last video. <laughs> <laughs> well, one, one day we might have viewers, but oh, at, there you go. Yeah, at the moment it's readers. Wanna, um, shall we check out some projects? Sure, if you like. Yeah, so to take us through some. Um, well, this is the induction motor speed controller. This is a contributed design, uh, mm -hmm. quite a very, very well thought out one, I think. It's a pretty heavy duty piece of gear. Um, Huge heatsink on the bottom. Yes. Um, well, even if it's 95% efficient, if it's running a one and a half kilowatt motor, that's that's a lot. Quite a bit of heat to dissipate. Yep. Um, and yeah, it's quite heavy duty, uh, and you certainly don't want to touch it while it's operating. That's for sure. At 350 volts DC. No, that's it's pretty serious. Mm. There's a schematic which yep. you can get if you uh, order yep. it's silicon chip. Published in the magazine. It is. Yep. And um, what have we got? This, we've got this, lead music color. Yes, this is a sneak peek. This is coming up in the October and November issues. And it's basically, it plays music. It also controls 16 stri strips of LEDs. Um, and it's essentially a spectrum analyzer. It varies the brightness with, with frequency and power. Okay. So it's it. pretty much the idea is you, you build it, you plug it in, you play music, and you have a light show. No extra effort required. Got it. And hey, yep. we've got Agilent have loaned you a new. Yep, this is some sort of a, a portable scope, which seems pretty nice actually. Are you going to do a review of that? Are if you? they give it to us for review, oh, yeah. Right. Um, okay. I wouldn't mind. All right. Um, and here we have the this this device is supposed to discourage barking dogs. <laughs> um, Does it work? Um, according to Ross, yes, with with some caveats. <laughs> um, <laughs> Some people say the dogs learn just to not bark near the <laughs> the device. They're pretty smart. They are smart. They're certainly yeah. smart enough. But anyway, that's sort of the aim, anyways, to get them not not to not to sit on your fence and bark at you all day. <laughs> Got it. Uh, all right. Yep. Oh, this looks yep. nice. This is our Ultra LD Mark III power amplifier. Mm -hmm. uh, um, a lot of tweaking on this one. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Um, it's almost as good performance as our Class A amplifier, but with less heat and uh, quite a bit more power. I saw a couple of uh, kids building this. If you oh, really? saw my video at the uh, local uh, school, I oh, just okay. see kids were uh, building wow, a couple okay. of these. That's they pretty. Had, they had built um, some serious yeah, yeah. things to take on. But um, yeah, so I've been. I mean, there are obviously some HSC age students who are very capable and they're very capable. Really into electronics. They are. Um, yep. Yeah. This is up. this is um, my PIC AVR programming adapter board, uh, which basically solves a problem that I've run into many times, which is that you you have an in-circuit programmer, you've built your board, whatever for whatever reason you don't have a header on it to program your chip, mm -hmm. 
um, and you need a way to do it. And I got sick of building rigs for every different chip to program it. Right. So this one is basically intended to be a one device you can reconfigure to, to to route the programming and power signals to your microcontroller. There you go, and it yeah. supports every pretty oh, much every PIC oh, and 8-bit AVR. Pick. Yeah, Even the 32s. Not the, I don't know about the 32s. Right. Um, I don't think they were in DIP package when I designed this. Ah, yeah, and, they um, may not be. And I don't. It depends on the pin configuration. It's possible that they're programmed. Right. Um, a lot of picks use the same, you know, there's probably about eight different configurations that are used by most picks, but then there are some oddball ones, yep. and I couldn't support them all. Yeah, of course um, not. But yeah, pretty much every one that we've used in a project will, can be programmed with this board. Got so it. So that was the main goal. Brilliant. And yeah. did you write your own software for that, or was This it doesn't have software, software, actually. It's all oh. discrete logic. There, oh, the, there was right. the, uh, a few reasons for doing that. One of them is I didn't want people to have to program a pick in order to program picks. <laughs> Got it. Uh, <laughs> Chicken and egg. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and the other the other reason was if I had a microcontroller controlling it, um, because of the MOSFET gate drive, I'd need a lot of level shifting, and it would have ended up being almost as complicated anyway. Got so, it. So I thought discrete logic was the way to go. Excellent. And we've got, what's um, this? Six th test instruments in one. Yeah, this is, um, it's essentially a USB sound card with a scope type interface. Mm -hmm. So you can use it as a, an audio frequency scope in combination with the correct software. You can also use it as a spectrum analyzer. Um, the software will also do distortion measurement. So it's, it's a pretty handy tool to have, especially if, if you don't have an oscilloscope, or even if you do, it can, it can do some things that scopes can't easily do. Right, so it's just basically a uh, input uh, scope preamp and uh, offset shifter? Uh, it's thing, pretty much, a, it, it's really only for AC coupled signals. Oh, only yeah, for so AC, okay. Yeah. Got it. Oh, because the sound card's only AC. Well, Most yeah, the sound, the sound are this AC sound, coupled. Yeah, well, this right. actually it has its own sound card essentially, but that chip is designed for AC coupled inputs. So, Got it. Yeah. Oh, okay, so it uses a Cirrus Logic. It's uh, actually it's a Texas Instruments Burr Brown oh, right. USB audio chip. Got it. And next up, high quality digital audio signal generator. Yes, um, we have that feeding the the test instrument interface, um, generating a sweep at the moment. Um, it can also generate a pulse, it can do, do mixed sine waves, it can also do square waves, triangle, sawtooth, and it has um, analog and SPDIF and Toslink outputs. Very nice. Hello, Nicholas. Hello. That's all right. And, hey, it's Leo Simpson, the editor. <laughs> How are you doing, Leo? We're I'm just well. running through our projects here. Oh, that's good, good. Excellent. How's the magazine going? It's going reasonably well. We've got this champion contributor here. <laughs> he is, he is. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> and uh, 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 what, um, uh, your subscribers mostly Australian still, or are they you know, getting overseas? Oh, the vast majority would be. Right, yes. okay. Because I, I, everyone, I hear a lot of talk, they're saying that Silicon Chip is the best produced electronics magazine in well, the world. I love to hear that sort of thing, David. No, yep. That's wonderful. No. Uh, just keep that coming. <laughs> That's really good. Uh, well, actually, we don't know what will happen to the subscriber base once we go live with our new website, which oh. has a page to view and all the rest of it. So it'll be quite a ah. lot better than our That's existing. interesting. What's the rationale behind that? Well, we think our, our existing web website uh, mm -hmm. is well past its years by date. I think that's, that's, <laughs> you could say I that, that, yeah, yeah. I think that's the sort of, you know, fairly subdued way of putting it. Yeah. And what will be on the new website? Well, all the magazines that are presently there, right. but it'll be page to view. So, you know, you just turn the pages just yep. and all the, all the adverts and everything, which, so it'll be quite a big step up from our existing website. And what, if you're an existing subscriber, do you get that access yes. to that? Yes, if you've right. got access to a particular issue in the old format, you'll oh, have access. Oh, if you're an old digital subscriber. If you're, well, right. when I should say old, I should say a legacy, <laughs> a legacy. subscriber. Yep. Yes. So when we, when we go live, we should have a f about five years of new archive material. Mm -hmm. The old material will still be there, so people will still be able to access all of that material that was there before. So. Any plans on releasing all the old EA stuff on DVD? Look, is that is no, it's difficult? too hard. Well, yeah. you know, I've got to get it scanned, and yep. you know, then it's got to be searchable. I mean, I'm told the best way to do that is to send it to India. Right. But, but yeah. there are copyright issues for some of the stuff. They are yes. for the contributors like myself. Exactly. Yep. That's right. So yep. while we own the entire copyright for ETI and mm -hmm. uh, Electronics Australia and going much further back, still the original copyright thing that may, contributors may or may not have uh, you know, 
uh, given over to EA, mm -hmm. and we don't know who did what. Yep. Okay. Um, because as a contributor to EA, I didn't sign in. So if you didn't, didn't sign anything, anything away, well, no, then your exactly. copyrights. Well, you're yeah. just a very mean person, aren't you? <laughs> right. No, you can have my. You can reprint. No. You have my permission. Well, I'd always there talk to you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there is a, there are copyright issues, yep. and the same thing applies to electronics today, or ETI, or yes. whatever it was called in its various yep. guises. So it is a bit difficult for mm. us. But uh, you released Wireless Weekly on ah, DVD. Ah yes, but that's, oh, no, we didn't. Not Wireless Weekly. Um, uh, what was it? it, was, it was Radio, Radio TV's TV's and Hobbies. And hobbies. You that's see, right. now that's that's out of the copyright, yep. so we don't have an issue there. And, you know, we didn't have those sort of copyright issues in those days anyway. Yep. Life was much simpler. Yeah, my lot much simpler, everyone was much kinder, everyone well, wasn't I don't know that everything was... I don't, no, I, would, I wouldn't necessarily... I think people are still reasonable, you know. Yeah. Still, oh, of course, of course you know, they are. I didn't have any road rage on the way here this <laughs> No, morning, that's or, right. And I didn't... I wasn't subjected to any, so... <laughs> No, anyway, so that that's it. So, so and we'll have we'll also have a, have a shop, so people will be able to buy stuff. We don't know the full details yet. Uh -huh. We're presently negotiating with the people who actually house our website now. So right. we're hoping to transfer that over within a month or so. I noticed um, you're now selling uh, PC. You're now selling the PCBs. That yeah. Barnes so all the projects that you see here, yep. we would have the PC boards right. available. So it's not not all the boards going back, but I think we've probably got most of the boards going for the last two years or so, right. something okay. like that. And if people really want something, well, we can have a look and see whether it's economic for them. Um, for us to order it in. Right. Obviously, we have to process the, the board artworks and then send them off to, to get them made. Of course. But they're very high quality boards, which you've probably so, seen. Who, with your, who actually uh, makes those? A uh, little Chinese uh, person uh, somewhere. Right, <laughs> right that's, uh, yeah, some one hung low Chinese yeah, that's PCB right. factory. Yeah, okay. Because right. yeah, there's not much PCB. I don't think there's Actually, one. there's quite a bit. It left in Australia? I don't know. There's no, quite there's, a bit. Because I'm getting mine made in New Zealand now by uh, Circuit Labs. Who there's are there's also some here. people uh, in Newport, isn't it? Um, who right. will do a, a quick prototype for us and yep. good quality and all the rest of it. So we've used them, them from time to time. Mm -hmm. But there are other, other PC board manufacturers. Now, whether they farm some of that offshore. Sure, to, and they I don't, don't tell you. Really. Yeah, I don't you know. have to I ask. But obviously, there's a lot of PC board assembly in this country. Yes, there is. I get my boards assembled here in Sydney. Do you? So, yes. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's not all black. In fact, people say, oh, you know, there's no manufacturing in Australia. Well, there wouldn't be a show like this yep, if there wasn't right. manufacturing in Australia. Yes, a lot of it's sort of niche manufacturing, highly specialised. Mm -hmm. There's very little consumer manufacturing these days. But Australia is still kicking up there. You know? It is. It's still doing good. Yeah. So the stand's doing good here. Yeah. Lots yeah, of we've people had coming a... through. Yes, yes, that's right. Terrific. Just, a, lot, a lot of them just saying hello. I mean, yep. Of course, the vast majority of people do know us. Of course. So... Yeah, hmm. love it. And uh, we're looking at some of your. Well, I think we've done most of the projects. Well, this is only a very small selection. A very David. small selection. That's and, right. Uh, how many projects on average each month? Oh, three to four. Three yeah. to four projects. Yeah. Uh, you're That's the right. only magazine in the world doing that. I think really to that frequency. Oh yes. I mean, be. there's Elector still, yep. and there's Circuit Seller, but they're not doing the same sort of stuff as we do. And I don't think they're as hands-on or as yeah. or as you know. Hobby is friendly or any mm -hmm. or accessible that sort of thing. Um, EPE magazine in mm -hmm. the UK, which of course is on sale in Australia. Well, yep. you can buy that, but you will find it's full of silicon chip uh, projects. Exactly, which is done under license. Yes, yep. so that's fine. Yep. Yeah, terrific. Thanks, but, Leo. Okay, well, thank you, David, and uh, all the best for the show. Excellent. Thanks, Nicholas. Thanks.